Hello everyone and welcome back to another a massive chess game between Bobby Fischer and Yukio Miyazaki. This chess game happened in the Seigen Chess Olympiad in 1970. Bobby Fischer had the black pieces and his opponent Miyazaki was the Japanese chess champion he was from Japan and he was playing with the white pieces. This chess game happened in 1970 when Bobby Fischer reached at his peak. Fischer was like invincible at that time. So Miyazaki was from Japan and Japan is actually one of my favorite countries. I am following the sumo wrestling tournaments which happen six times in a year, uh, every year. So, which is known as the Makunuchi Division. Just want to share that with you. <laughs> I know uh, that has nothing to do in a chess focused channel. So, uh, okay. Let's see what happened in this chess game. Miyazaki, who has the white pieces, starts the game with pushing the e pawn. Bobby Fischer played c5, the Sicilian defense. Knight to f3, d6, d4. We have the open Sicilian. Knight to c3, a6. Bishop to e3, e5. Knight back, bishop to e7. Bishop to e2, developing the bishop. Knight from b to d7 and Miyazaki pushed the f-pawn. So slowly developing and then Bobby Fischer also castled. Queen over, knight to b6, f takes on e5, d takes on e5. Developing the queen and targeting the king. Knight to a4, the first interesting looking move by Bobby Fischer. And we have rook from a to d1. Well, you might ask what happens if capturing the knight and damaging the pawn structure, then this was the idea of Bobby Fischer. B takes on a4, attacking the knight, and well, white has to defend the knight, and then landing on c2. And if capturing the pawn on e5, then capturing the knight is very good for black. Queen takes on d2, and actually black is better. So... This is why Bobby Fischer played knight to a4, rook from a to d1, and then Bobby Fischer captured the knight, and Fischer is damaging the pawn structure. So, in this position, what happens if rook takes on d8, then knight takes on e2, this is check, and then getting back the queen, and, well, we can say that white can resign, because if capturing the rook, then capturing the rook with check. So this is losing. This is basically losing for white. Maybe rook takes rook check. Rook takes or bishop takes a rook. And then king takes knight, but then knight takes on e4. Anyway, so this is losing for white. This is why knight takes on c3 by Bobby Fischer. B takes on c3. And then queen to c7, targeting the c-pawn. And now Miyazaki is threatening checkmate. That's a one-move threat, and Bobby Fischer is easily defending. Knight goes back, rook up, defending the c-pawn. And Bobby Fischer played king to h8, attacking the bishop. The bishop is a... the pawn is not pinned anymore. So bishop goes back, and then bishop to c4 by Bobby Fischer, defending the rook. And now knight to f6, Fischer could capture the bishop and then land on c3, but when you see a good move, look for a better one. That's what Emmanuel Lesker said. We have knight to f6 attacking the e-pawn, defending with the queen, and then targeting the e-pawn once again. Defending with the bishop and white is just defending. He is just defending on time, but we can say that White is on the ropes. Well, in this position, Bobby Fischer captured the bishop. Rook takes on d3. Well, what happens in this position if c takes on d3? Then this time, the c pawn is falling and black is much better. This is losing for white. Also, it looks like the a pawn is going to fall after defending the knight. So this position, defending this position is not that easy at all. Rook takes on d3, but this time knight takes on e4, and black is a pawn up, and this is losing for white. 
knight to a5, defending the queen and defending the knight. King to h2 and Fischer push the pawn, solo the fighting, bishop up, extra defense and activating the bishop, bishop to g5, rook from f to d1, bishop check and how to defend, we have king to h1, well Miyazaki didn't want to play king to g1, what happens if king to g1, can you see the best move for black, why king to g1? is a losing move on the spot. King to h1 is also losing because knight to g3 is coming. But why this move is losing? King to h1 is also losing. So can you see the best move for black? Let me give you a couple of seconds to pause the video if you need. Because of queen to b6, this is check, and also attacking the knight after moving the king, capturing the knight, and white can safely resign. This is losing for white. So this is why after checking the king, we have king to h1, but knight to g3 is also losing immediately because of king to h2, and Bobby Fischer checks the king, and Miyazaki resigned because of this continuation, moving the king, and then pushing the pawn, and white is losing the rook, black is winning the rook, and this is all over for white. White is going to experience a slow death. And Miyazaki resigned against Bobby Fischer at move 31. He was the much inferior opponent for Bobby Fischer, of course Bobby Fischer was not just the best player at that time, he was one of the best of all times. Uh, but this was also a flawless chess game by Bobby Fischer, a pretty nice chess game, so thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed watching this chess game of Bobby Fischer which is a pretty rare chess game, unfortunately I couldn't find any pictures of Miyazaki, uh, I looked for everywhere but unfortunately he doesn't have any picture, uh, so sorry about that and thank you very much for watching again and I hope to see you next time, take care and bye bye.